Josh Hennick here on Game Night on 97.3 ESPN. And we get another busy sports weekend, the Masters, and a busy NFL weekend. Of course, you have the opportunity with DraftKings. They've launched their first ever multi-sport $100,000 free-to-play pool combining the Masters and NFL Sunday. And here to talk more about it is the one and only Reed Fowler here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Reed, how are you doing today? Josh, doing well. Yeah, I'm excited. This uh, this new thing that we're doing over at DraftKings, you know, it's, it's like you mentioned, a hundred thousand dollar price pool, and questions to choose from, like which will be greater: number of uh, Bryson drives over 350 yards, or number of QBs with over 350 passing yards on Sunday. So it, it's it's very cool to um, to do that. This is you know a tradition unlike any other. They're they're true and they're. <laughs> They're talking about it because we get Masters in November. We get it with football. And we get two Masters, Josh, within a span of six months. So I'm, I'm excited to, to talk some uh, talk and shop with you. Well, let's get into something about the Masters because I know a lot of people, you know, when you look at the odds, you look at the lines about, you know, who is, you know, who's the favorite, who's not the favorite. But I feel like in 2020, this might be the year where, you know, maybe the favorites really aren't the favorites anymore because of how, different everything is there's going to be no patrons in the stands there's going to be a totally different environment down there everything i've heard and read is telling me that this might be the year to maybe not go straight for the favorites well yeah and you take a look at the last five years from 2015 the average odds if you compile all the guys from tiger all the way to speed is around 30 plus 3800 plus 3900 right that's not to say that that's where you get those guys who are going to win but when you take a look at it, right, like the tie, I believe Tiger, uh, I, excuse me, I believe um, Jordan Speed was the lowest at a plus 1,100 in 2015. And we saw a guy like Danny Willett when, when the, you know, when the Masters had a cold and rainy uh, environment, it, it was Danny Willett who won at plus 6,600. Now, when you take a look at Augusta, right, we, we're going to hear this quite a bit, is that course history is, is extremely important this week. Um, guys who know where to hit it, where to, where to miss it, uh, is definitely uh, something that's going to be vastly important, how they play around the greens. And that does, that does matter here. It matters more so here than anywhere else, but I wouldn't say it matters more so than current form. And so I, I hear what you're saying about the favorites, like the guys like Dustin Johnson, uh, Justin Thomas, um, and Brooks Kepka to an extent, they've been playing well. You know, over the last week or last month, we've seen. Um, and then Bryson clearly is is one of the top dogs. So I get what you're saying. There's going to be some guys that we'll talk about in that 30 range that I really like. But I also think that when you look at this type of tournament, man, the, the top dogs usually win it. I know Bryson, you know, he's one of these guys. He's got the big, long drive. But is he really the best putter for the Masters to be able to round this out to a win in 2020? Yeah, so if you just take a look at putting without the, the bent grass, fast, those, those type of things splits, he actually ranks third in strokes game putting over the last 36 rounds. So when, you, when, when people talk about, man, Bryson is hitting it a mile, look at, the, you know, look at where he's going to hit the ball, number one, like his, his direction and, and navigating through a course. When he gets on, uh, on the surface, on the greens, he's an extremely good putter. But a big thing that, that he has to do, right, because this is really going to be a test of how to not be – like how to be aggressive but then turn it off once you get to the greens. The guys who are more defensive putters at Augusta usually do well. So the Ricky Fowlers, although he's one of the best at Augusta National uh, and, and one of the best putters, he's an aggressive first putter. A guy like Bryson and other guys who have done well, even a Patrick Reed to an extent, Tiger – when he won last year or 2019, these guys were more defensive putters taking away those three putts and getting pars when they need to get pars and being aggressive on those par fives when they can be. So he's someone that I'm really excited to see how he navigates and how he turns it off. Because when you're a guy who's uh, competing in a long drive contest off the tee, you're going to have to dial it down. Your heart rate is going to have to, you know, be a little bit slower when you get up into these greens because it's more about touch than it is about being aggressive when you get on these putting surfaces. Reed Fowler joining me here on Game Night on 97.3 ESPN. Follow me where I read T. Fowler for all of your PGA and NFL analysis. Don't forget DraftKings, $100,000 
to play that the pool for you to win a hundred thousand dollars combining the Masters and NFL Sunday. You can get in on the action only with DraftKings. A couple of names that stand out to me for this weekend as well, Reed. I'm looking at Xander Shoffley. We know that he mm-hmm. played well in last year's Masters. Is he a guy that you're interested in to see what he does now in this iteration? Yeah, he's always someone that you have to be interested in when it gets to these major tournaments. Like you mentioned, fifth at the U.S. Open, tenth at the PGA. And like you talked about, he was competing last year, right? If it wasn't for Tiger Woods and that storybook ending, you know, we could we have seen something like a, a Xander Shafi, Brooks Kepka, Dustin Johnson type of, of playoff? Who knows, right? And we don't want to speculate on that because Tiger winning was one of the best things that, that could have happened to all of us as fans, not just in golf, but in sports in general. But yeah, I mean, you talk about it. Like his, his putting has been fantastic over the last five tournaments. He's got no worse than I believe a 25th place dating back to June 28th at the Travelers Championship. He's got a couple of 25s, uh, top 25s at the BMW and the Northern Trust back in August. But take a look at what he did at the CJ Cup. He was second, right? You see a, you know, a good field there. The U.S. Open, he was fifth. Another second at a Tour Championship, a no-cut event. Um, that I believe he would have won if it was just based on strokes from the, from the beginning and not the extra strokes. And then the 17th at the Zoso Championship. So when you take a look at, at what Xander is doing, it's hard, to, it's, it's hard to say that he doesn't belong up there. Only, the only thing that I would say is that from a betting perspective and value on his number, that's the one part that he's always going to have issues with because he hasn't won at the same clip as these guys up at the top have won at. Like Brooks Kepka at 1700 is the one guy that I think those both those guys should be switched in my opinion. Brooks should be 16, Xander should be 17, and I'd be completely fine with saying Xander is at his number of something that is quote unquote value. But yeah, he's been playing fantastic golf over the last what six months. You mentioned the betting odds. One guy's numbers that stand out to me that's very interesting. Tony Finau is a plus 3300 to win. But he's a plus yeah. 250 for top 10 finish. So is there maybe something where you say, hey, you know, people talk about making parlays, right, on maybe an NFL yep. Sunday, right? Well, what if you said, hey, Tony Finau, I don't know if he's going to win, but that plus right. 250 might be enough juice for me to create a parlay with Tony Finau for top 10. Yeah, absolutely. Talk about a Finau in, in placement spots. <laughs> he is the one guy. When you talk about major tournaments, you know, and whatever that, that barrier is of him actually winning, he's that, he's that player. And, and like, you're exactly right. If you're parlaying that with, you know, NFL Sunday and you don't know, right. If you, if you, he's really good. And we've seen him make a popular golfer, whether it be DraftKings or just in general. And you don't be like, man, he's got all these top 10 and top fives. He has to be good. He has to be able to win. So right. maybe his outright is great. No, <laughs> like, he just like that. Those those top fives, top tens are is the spot to go. Tony Finau, the ball striking is, is great. You know the putter can get hot and cold. It's leaning a little bit more hot of recent. So yeah, absolutely a plus two fifty to top ten. I think that's a fantastic uh, a fantastic wager. Is there anybody else in that top five, top ten range that you're looking at and you're saying, you know, I don't think this guy is going to win the tournament, but I feel really good about them finishing in the top five or top ten that people can take a look at with DraftKings. Yeah, one guy I'm interested in is Cam Smith. Like his outright is at plus 9,000 right now in the DraftKings Sportsbook. His top 10 is at plus 550. Look, this is a, a, it's a 93-man field. It's top 50 and ties to make the cut. And so for drafting specifically, you're going to need your 6 of 6 you know, from the get-go to get through if you want a chance to win the Millie Maker. But if you're looking at from the betting, uh, the betting market specifically, these top, these top five, top tens, you want to potentially look at guys that are further down the list that, you know, because it's a major, their, their numbers are inflated. And Cam Smith is one player I'm taking a really good look at because when you look at what he's been able to do of recent, he's been great. Like when you talk about putting him up against some of these other players up at the very top, he's one guy that's, that's striking the ball, you know, uh, fantastic over his last handful of tournaments. He's got a 24th at the Shriners. Uh, 11th at the CJ Cup and a fourth at the Zozo Championship. So progressively getting better. He hasn't lost strokes with his irons since the WGC St. Jude back in August. So we know the irons are there. And he's, and he's just a great putter. 
He's a great putter. He plays around the greens very well. So Cam Smith is one guy I'm looking at both from an outright perspective and also bringing that back insurance a little bit. Top five, I believe at plus 1200 and then top 10. If you don't, if you're not as bullish as I am on Cam Smith and plus 550 for his top 10. For your full list of masters predictions, preview and more go jump on Reed Fowler at Twitter at Reed T Fowler. He's got posted his Masters Tournament predictions and preview right now. That's Reed T. Fowler on Twitter. Now, Reed, before I let you go, we know that according to a DraftKings study of over 1,000 fans who love both football and golf, they found 77% are interested in getting a multi-sport gaming. So, is there an NFL game or two that maybe someone says, I want to get in on these early week Masters odds, but I want to parlay that with some of the early week NFL odds? Yeah, I mean, if, if you're looking at the top, I never advise to do this because <laughs> it's so hard to pick a golfer uh, to win the tournament. Um, and so, like, if your golfer wins the tournament and then your NFL bet doesn't, because um, those are extremely variant. But it's extremely fun, like you mentioned, Josh. It's, it's extremely fun, you know, to have football on Sunday and golf. So this time I might look at, you know, and, and please bet responsibly. Um, I might look at this a little bit closer like if you want to go after the, the favorites, like a John Rom or a Brooks Kepka at the very top, right? Brooks at plus 1700, John Rom right now at plus 1050 on the DK Sportsbook and parlay that with Seahawks plus two at the Rams. I can't think of a, a reason or, or other than like just uh, recency bias that the Seahawks are underdogs to the Rams. Like the Rams are one and two in their last three and they lost to the 49ers and Dolphins. I mean, the Dolphins are a better team than we thought. But now you're looking at the Seahawks, you know, coming off of that bad loss, 44 points to the Bills, getting uh, being an underdog and getting two against the Rams. I know they're coming off their bye, but the, the Seahawks have historically been great ATS uh, coming up after a loss. They're 1-0 this season after a loss ATS with a margin of victory of, of uh, I believe, 10 points. And so I'm confident, Pete Carroll, we might get Chris Carson back, which I believe changes the dynamic of this game. So give me Seahawks plus two. And parlay that with one of these top guys like Dustin Johnson, JT, or Brooks Kepka as a favorites if you don't like their outright number because it's a little too short. He's Reed Fowler. Follow him on Twitter for more of your NFL and PGA analysis. Reed T. Fowler. And don't forget about the DraftKings $100,000 pool. It's free to play combining the Masters and the NFL Sunday only with DraftKings. As all guests, Reed appeared on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Reed, always appreciate the time. All right, Josh. Thanks. 